Hello dear students, in this video I will continue with the 5th unit probability. Here I will continue solving the questions from exercise 12.6. So the 15th question, the probabilities of two students A and B coming to school in time are 3 by 7 and 5 by 7 respectively. Assuming that the events A coming in time and B coming in time are independent, find the probability of only one of them coming to school in time. So here we have two students A and B coming to school in time. Uh, their associated probabilities are given. Now we need to find probability of only one of them coming to school in time if these two events are independent. So let us take let E1 and E2 be the events A and B coming to school in time respectively. So we have probability of E1 is 3 by 7 and probability of E2 is 5 by 7. Now we need to find probability of only one of them coming to school in time. So probability of only one of them coming to school, the required probability is probability of E1 intersection E2 complement. That is E1 uh, A comes to school in time whereas B does not come to school in time. So that is P, P of E1 intersection E2 complement plus A does not come to school in time but B comes to school in time. So it is probability of E1 complement intersection E2. Now since E1 and E2 are independent, E1 and E2 complement are independent and E1 complement and E2 are also independent. So, this is equal to probability of E1 into probability of E2 complement plus probability of E1 complement into probability of E2. So, probability of E1 is 3 by 7, probability of E2 complement is 1 minus 5 by 7 plus probability of E1 complement is 1 minus 3 by 7 and probability of E2 is 5 by 7. So, this is equal to 3 by 7 into 2 by 7 plus 4 by 7 into 5 by 7. So, the LCM is 49. So, this is 6 plus 20. So, it is 26 by 49. So, this is the required probability. The required probability is probability of only one of them coming to school in time. It is 26 by 49. Next question. Kamal and Monica appear for an interview for two vacancies. The probability of Kamal's selection is 1 by 3 and that of Monica's selection is 1 by 5. Find the probability that only one of them will be selected. So here the probability of Kamal's selection is given as 1 by 3 and Monica's selection is 1 by 5. So let us take let E1 and E2 be the events Kamal and Monica getting selected respectively. So, probability of E1 is 1 by 3 and probability of E2 is 1 by 5. Now, we need to find the probability that only one of them will, get, will be selected. So, again it is similar to the previous question. So, the required probability will be probability of E1 intersection E2 complement plus probability of E1 complement intersection E2. Here it is probability of Kamal selected, Monica not selected plus probability of Kamal not selected and Monica gets selected. So this is probability of E1 into probability of E2 complement plus probability of E1 complement into probability of E2. So, this is equal to 1 by 3 into probability of E2 complement is 1 minus 1 by 5 plus probability of E1 complement is 1 minus 1 by 3 into probability of E2 is 1 by 5. Now, this when we simplify, we will get the answer. So, here the LCM is 15. 
So this is equal to 6 by 15 which is 2 by 5. So the required probability is 2 by 5. Next question, a problem in statistics is given to three students whose chances of solving it are 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4 respectively. What is the probability that exactly one of them solves it correctly? So it is similar to previous one but we have three students here. So let us take let E1, E2 and E3 be the events. The problem is solved by first, second and third student respectively. So probability of E1 is given as half. Probability of E2 is 1 by 3 and probability of E4 is, I am sorry, E3 is 1 by 4. So, we need to find probability that exactly one of them solves it correctly. So, the required probability is probability of E1 intersection, E2 complement intersection, E3 complement only the first student solves or only the second student solves that will be probability of E1 complement intersection probability E2 intersection E3 complement plus probability of E1 complement intersection E2 complement intersection E3. So this is the probability that the first student solves plus this is the probability that only the second student solves, plus this is the probability that only the third student solves. So, since these three events are independent, this is equal to probability of E1 into probability of E2 complement into probability of E3 complement, plus probability of E1 complement into probability of E2 into probability of E3 complement, plus probability of E1 complement into probability of E2 complement into probability of E3. So, this is equal to, so probability of E1 is half, probability of E2 complement is 1 minus 1 by 3, 2 by 3, probability of E3 complement is 1 minus 1 by 4, 3 by 4 plus Probability of E1 complement is 1 minus half which is half. Probability of E2 is 1 by 3. Probability of E3 complement is 1 minus 1 by 4. So, 3 by 4. Plus probability of E1 complement is half. E2 complement is 2 by 3. And probability of E3 is 1 by 4. So, this is equal to the LCM is 24. 6 plus 3 plus 2. So, this is equal to 11 by 24. So, the required probability is 11 by 24. Equal to Next question, a machine operates if all of its three components function. The probability that the first component fails during the year is 0.14, probability that the second component fails is 0.1 and probability that the third component fails is 0 0.05. What is the probability that the machine will fail during the year? So, here it is given the machine operates only if all these com three components work. So, we need to find what is the probability that the machine will fail. We are given probability of first component fail, second component fail and third component fails as 0 0.14, 0 0.1 and 0 0.05. So, what we can do? Let us take, let E1, E2 and E3 be the events, first, second and third components are in good condition respectively. So, here Probability of the component fails is given, but we have taken E1, E1 as the event first component is in good condition. So, probability of E1 will be 1 minus 0.14. So, this is equal to 0.86 and probability of E2 will be, so E2 is the event, the second component works in good condition. Uh, probability of E2 will be 1 minus 
probability that the second component will fail. So it is 1 minus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.9 and probability of E3 will be that is probability that the third component will work in good condition. It will be 1 minus 0 0.05. This is 0.95. And let us take, let A be the event, the machine operates. So, the machine will operate only when all these three components function well. We need to find the probability that the machine will fail. Now, let us take, let A be the event, the machine operates. That is, the machine operates if all, all three components are in good condition. So, probability of A, it will be probability of E1 intersection, E2 intersection, E3. Since these three events are independent, this is equal to probability of E1 into probability of E2 into probability of E3. So, it is 0 0.86 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.95. So, this when we multiply, we get 0 0.7353. So, this is probability that the machine will work in good condition. Now, we need to find the probability that the machine will fail during the year. Therefore, the required probability is probability of A complement. This is equal to 1 minus probability of A. It is 1 minus 0 0.7353. So, this is equal to 0.26. So, the probability that the machine will fail during the year is 0 0.2647. Next question, A can hit a target 4 times out of 5 times, B can hit the target 3 times out of 4 times and C can hit 2 times out of 3 times. They fire simultaneously. Find the probability that any two out of A, B, C will hit the target and the second subdivision, none of them will hit the target. So, here it is given A can hit the target four times out of five times, B, C and C it is given. So, let us take that E1, E2 and E3 be the events, A, B and C hit the target respectively. So, probability of E1 is 4 by 5. Probability of E2 is 3 by 4 and probability of E3 is 2 by 3. Now, the first subdivision, any 2 out of A, B, C will hit the target. So, any 2 hit the target means we have A and B hitting but C failing, then A and C hitting, B failing, then B and C hitting and A failing. So, the required probability will be probability of E1 intersection, E2 intersection, E3 complement plus probability of E1 intersection, E2 complement intersection, E3 plus probability of E1 complement intersection, E2 intersection, E3. So, this is the probability that A and B will hit but C fails. This is the probability that A and C will hit B fails. This is the probability that B and C will hit and A fails. So, the probability that any two out of A, B, C will hit the target is the sum of these three. So, this is equal to probability of E1 into probability of E2 into probability of E3 complement since all these events are independent plus probability of E1 into probability of E2 complement into probability of E3 plus probability of E1 complement into probability of E2 into probability of E3. So, this is equal to 4 by 5 into 3 by 4 into Probability of E3 complement will be 1 minus 2 by 3 plus 4 by 5 into 
1 minus 3 by 4 into 2 by 3 plus 1 minus 4 by 5 into 3 by 4 into 2 by 3. So, the required probability, let me continue here. 4 by 5 into 3 by 4 into 1 by 3 plus 4 by 5 into 1 by 4 into 2 by 3 plus 1 by 5 into 3 by 4 into 2 by 3. So, this is equal to if the LCM is 60, we have 12 plus 8 plus 6. So, it is 26 by 60, which is 13 by 30. So, probability that any 2 out of ABC will hit the target is 13 by 30. Now, moving on to the second subdivision, none of them will hit the target. It is nothing but it is probability of second one required probability is Probability of E1 complement intersection, E2 complement intersection, E3 complement. So, none of them will hit the target is this probability. So, it is probability of E1 complement into probability of E2 complement into probability of E3 complement. So, it is 1 minus 4 by 5 into 1 minus 3 by 4 into 1 minus 2 by 3. So, it is 1 by 5 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 3. So, this is 1 by 60. Next question. A speaks truth in 75% of cases while B in 90% of cases. In what percent of cases? Are they likely to con contradict each other in stating the same fact? So, here let us take let E be the E1 be the event A speaks truth and E2 be the event B speaks truth. So, if A speaks truth in 75% of cases, then probability of A1 will be 75 by 100, which is 0 0.75, and probability of E2 will be B speaks truth in 90% of cases. So, it is 90 by 100 which is 0.9. Now, we need to find in what percent of cases they are likely to contradict each other. So, they are likely to co contradict when A speaks truth and B speaks lie or we have when A speaks lie and B speaks truth. So, in these two cases, they are likely to contradict each other. So, the required probability is probability of E1 intersection E2 complement plus probability of E1 complement intersection E2. Since these two events are independent, we have this is equal to probability of E1 into probability of E2 complement plus probability of E1 complement into probability of E2. So, probability of E1 is 0.75 into 1 minus 0.9 plus 1 minus 0.75 into 0.9. So, this is 0.75 into 0.1 plus 0.25 into 0.9. So, this is equal to 0.075 plus 0.225. So, this is equal to 0.3. This is 30 percent. 0.3 is nothing but 30 percent. So, the percent of cases they are likely to contradict each other in stating the same fact is 30 percent of the cases. Therefore, required number of cases equal to required percent of cases equal to 30%. Next question, a bag contains one black and two white balls. A drawing from the bag consists of taking a ball from the bag and keeping it out if it is white, but putting it black back if it is black. Calculate the following probabilities. 
So here it is given a bag contains one black and two white balls. And a drawing consists of taking a ball from the bag and if it is white ball it is kept out. But if it is a black ball it is again put inside. So we need to find each of these probabilities. So let us take let E1 be the event. The first drawing is a white ball. So we have one black and two white balls. So probability of E1 will be selecting one white ball from these two white balls. It is two upon the total number of balls is three. So probability of E1 will be two by three. So probability of drawing first white ball is two by three. And then the next uh, subdivision, the second drawing is a white ball. So let us take, let E2 be the event, second drawing is a white ball. So probability of E2, it is, we can either draw first black ball, then white ball, or we can draw first white ball and second white ball. So probability of drawing first black ball, it is 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 into probability of drawing second white ball. If a black ball is drawn, it is it is put back inside the bag. So probability of drawing second white ball, it will be 2 by 3. Plus probability of drawing the first white ball will be 2 by 3. Plus 2 by 3 into probability of drawing second white ball will be after one white ball is drawn, it is kept outside. Now we are left with one black and one white ball. So probability of drawing one white ball from one black and one white ball is 1 by 2. So this is equal to 2 by 9 plus 2 by 6. So here the LCM is 18. So it is 10 by 18 which is 5 by 9. So this is the required probability. Moving on to the next subdivision. The third drawing is a white ball. So let us take let E3 be the event. Third drawing is a white ball. So probability of E3 will be. We have probability of drawing black ball first. Black ball second. And then the third ball white. Plus probability of black ball first. White ball second. Third ball white. Plus probability of white ball first. Black ball second. And white ball third. So these are the. Various cases where we can draw the third ball as white. So here in this case we have one black and two white balls. So this is equal to 1 by 3. Probably of drawing a black ball is 1 by 3. If a black ball is taken out it is put again inside the bag. So the total remains the same. So probably of drawing the second black ball is again 1 by 3. And probably of drawing a white ball is 2 by 3. Plus probability of drawing the first black ball is 1 by 3. Then probability of drawing second white ball it is 2 by 3. Now after drawing a white ball it is kept outside. So we are left with one black and one white ball. So the probability of drawing third white ball is 1 by 2. Plus probability of drawing one white ball is 2 by 3. 2 by 3. So after drawing one white ball, we are left with one black and one white ball. So probability of drawing one black ball is 1 by 2. So here probability of drawing the second black ball is 1 by 2. Into probability of drawing the third white ball will be here one black ball is taken, it will be it will be it is put inside the bag. So probability of drawing third white ball will be 1 by 2. So this is equal to 2 by 27 plus 1 by 9 plus 3 by 6. So the LCM is 54. So here we have 4 plus 6 plus 9. This is 19 by 54.
So the probability that the third drawing is a white ball, it is 19 by 54. Next question, a policeman fires four bullets on a decoid. The probability that the decoid will be killed by one bullet is 0 0.6. What is the probability that the decoid is still alive? So here it is given a, police, a policeman, he fires four bullets on a decoid and probability that the decoid will be killed by one bullet is 0 0.6. We need to find the probability that the decoid is still alive. The decoid will be still alive only when the policeman misses the target all the four times. So let us take, let E1, E2, E3 and E4 be the events. The policeman misses the target in the first, second, third and fourth time respectively. So it is given probability that the decoid will be killed by one bullet is 0.6. So probability that the policeman will miss the target will be 1 minus 0.6. So, probability of E1 will be 1 minus 0 0.6 which is 0.4. Now, again all these probabilities are equal. So, probability of E1 equal to probability of E2 equal to probability of E3 equal to probability of E4. So, this is equal to probability of E2 equal to probability of E3 equal to probability of E4. Now, we need to find the probability that the decoit is still alive. So, the decoit will be still alive if the policeman misses the target in all these four times. Therefore, required probability will be the probability of intersection of all these events. So, required probability is equal to probability of E1 intersection, E2 intersection, E3 intersection, E4. Now, since all these four events are independent, this is equal to probability of E1 into probability of E2 into probability of E3 into probability of E4 or it is 0.4 the whole raised to 4. 0.4 is nothing but it is 4 by 10. So, it is 2 by 5 the whole raised to 4 which is 16 upon 625. So, the probability that the decoit is still alive is 16 upon 625. Next question, A and B toss a coin alternately till one of them gets ahead and wins the game. If A starts first, then find the probability that B will win the game. So, here it is given A and B toss a coin alternately till one of them gets ahead. So, winning the game is getting a head. If A starts, we need to find the probability that B will win the game. So, let us take let H and T be the events getting a head and a tail respectively. So, probability of H is half and probability of tail is also half. And uh, here it is. it says A starts first. So, if A starts first, so probability that A wins in first throw, it is equal to probability of getting ahead. This is half. So, this is equal to probability of getting ahead, which is half. Now, if A wins in the second throw, now this can happen. Now, this can happen when a gets a tail, B gets a tail and then A gets a head. So, this is equal to probability of T into probability of T into probability of H. This is equal to half into half into half. So, it is half the whole cube. And if we take, if we find probability of A wins in the third toss. It will be first A has to get a tail, then B has to get a tail, again A has to get a tail, B has to get a tail and then A has to get a head. So, the associated value will be half the whole raised to 5. Like that this process goes on. Therefore, probability of A wins will be the sum of 
each of these. So it will be half plus half cube plus half the whole raised to 5 plus up to etc. So this is an infinite geometric series. So it is an infinite geometric series with a equal to half and the common ratio equal to half the whole square. Now we know how to find yes, yes is a by 1 minus r. Therefore probability of a wins will be half upon 1 minus half square using this formula. So, probability of A wins is the sum of this infinite geometric series. So, it will be half by 1 minus half square. So, it is half upon 1 minus 1 by 4, half upon 3 by 4, So, this is equal to 2 by 3. So, probability that A wins is 2 by 3. Since A and B, A winning and B winning are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, probability of B wins, it is equal to 1 minus probability of A wins. So, it is 1 minus 2 by 3, which is 1 by 3. Next question, A and B throw a pair of dice alternately till one of them gets a total of 10 and wins the game. Find their respective probabilities of winning if A starts first. So, this is similar to previous one but here A and B throw a, a pair of die alternately till one of them gets a total of 10. So, getting a total of 10 is winning the game. So, let us take let E be the event getting a total of 10. So, a total of 10 it can be obtained in these cases. When both die shows 5 or we have 4 comma 6 and 6 comma 4. So, in all these cases the person can win. So, probability of E will be 3 by 36. So, it is 1 by 12. And probability of E complement is 1 minus 1 by 12, which is 11 by 12. Now, if we find probability of A wins in first throw, then it means it is equal to probability of E. So, it is equal to 1 by 12. Now, if we want to find the probability of a wins in second throw. It means not getting total in the first by A, not getting total in the first by B and then getting a total of 10 after that. So, it is probability of E complement into E complement into E. So, this is equal to Probability of E complement into probability of E complement into probability of E. So, it is 11 by 12 the whole square into 1 by 12. Then probability of A wins in the third row. It will be 11 by 12 the whole raised to 4 into 1 by 12. Like that it goes on. Therefore, probability of A wins. It is equal to 1 by 12 plus 11 by 12 the whole square into 1 by 12 plus 11 by 12 the whole raised to 4 into 1 by 12 plus up to etc. So, again it is a infinite geometric progression. Here A equal to 1 by 12 and the common ratio equal to 1 by 12 the whole square. Using S is equal to A by 1 minus R for infinite geometric progression. We have probability of A wins equal to A is 1 by 12 upon 1 minus 11 by 12 the whole square. 
So it is 1 by 12 upon 1 minus 121 by 144. So this if we simplify we have 144 minus 121 is 23 upon 144. So this is equal to 12 by 23. So probability of A wins is 12 by 23 and probability of B wins is 1 minus probability of A wins. So, it is 1 minus 12 by 23 which is 11 by 23. So, these are the probabilities. With this the exercise questions are over. I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you for watching.